schools, uh, the districts are working around the clock. There are some uh, civic rogue elements, you know, uh, that are disrupting of late. You know, some have gone to uh, certain districts to disrupt. Uh, we will be requesting more support uh, from our from our from the law enforcement agents to assist us. Uh, it's pointless to come and say you are coming to fight for the rights of parents and learners, but you are disrupting the very same process that's been done to ensure that those parents, those learners are placed. You come to the district to disrupt. Why do you disrupt for two, three hours? You are disrupting an opportunity of work time that could have been utilized to ensure that those learners are placed. So we are appealing to those civic organizations. Leave, allow us to do our work. Don't go and disrupt because you want media attention. You know, there are ways that you can find media attention without necessarily disrupting a very, very you know, important work of education. So those civic organizations, please allow us to do our work. Don't disrupt. We know that some of them, even now some political parties have entered the space. The, some political parties have gone now, they have disrupted, uh, disrupted a school, and schools are throughout the province saying they are here to defend parents' rights. What do you mean parents' rights? when you go and stop parents from actually bringing their children to the school. If you are saying no child is not going to come, no child is going to enter the school until a certain parent, you are actually violating the very same principle that you are claiming to fight for. So those political parties keep away from our schools. If you want to come to our schools, come and assist us. Come and help us to come, let's work. But don't disrupt. Don't stop. We know that some of the parents, there are some schools where parents have come forward or vigilante uh, uh, groupings have come forward. Parents do not fight. We are not, you should not fight. We are, it's our responsibility to ensure that your, your children are in school. And we will ensure that we, we ensure that you have, we will do that. They must not have fearful, fear in any way. We are not fearful as a department. We are not scared of anybody. We are not scared of anyone. Uh, and and, and these, these, are, these are our schools. It's our responsibility. So we will ensure that we put kids in, in school. There are areas where this has tend to become racial. It can't be in 2023 we are dealing with racism. It cannot be. What makes me, one of the things that me, worries me is that uh, why is it that some, you know, some rogue elements in schools or some schools, there is no need to hire, you know, uh, or to put the school at a center of sowing divisions in our community. Schools are a center of development. That's what schools are. And that's what they should be. You know, it, we cannot find ourselves ha having a school community divided based on a school. We can't do that. And in most cases, we are sowing this division into our own children. The very same uh, racism that we are fighting and defeating and condemning and we despise. We are sowing it in our own children. So we literally we are reversing the very same gains that we have made as a country. And unfortunately that is led by parents. Led by parents and some obviously uh, uh, those who are in the leadership of certain schools. And I want to send a warning that I will not stop especially to those ones. Racism will not be tolerated in any way. That won't happen anymore. So, <clears throat> just to update, 
we are continuing to place uh, uh, our learners when we started we had uh, 292,145 complete applications. These are the parents who were able to provide all the necessary um, documentation and also met the deadline, they applied on time and, and we also had incomplete uh, applications, those were parents who who failed to provide necessary documentation, but they also applied. So, but with those, uh, those that have applied and, and were able to provide necessary documentation, we have managed to place 290,000 in total. So, we are left to 290,751. So, we are left with 1,394. Uh, uh, learners to be placed as of this morning. So that's 0.5 percent that is left. Uh, and I'll explain why we still have this, uh, this number. So there are certain areas where th there are pressure areas and that's where this number comes from. Ikureni North, namely the Oliphant and Kempton Park area where we are this morning. This is a very, very high pressure area. So in Olifan, we have in place uh, engaged a church uh, where they have given us space to ensure that we, we, we close off uh, the remaining 236 grade one applicants and placed. <clears throat> and also there's an additional three mobile units that will be provided to increase school capacities so that we can pl place all the, the learners. In grade eight, Kempton Park area remains a high pressure area, was still left with 501, uh, 501 uh, uh, unplaced learners. Uh, we are continuing to speak to our schools, uh, such as this one, if, uh, that let's, let's work together. Principal, where's Principal, Principal, Principal Murray? Morris. Yes, Principal Morris. We need to work together to ensure that we close off this thing. We need to work together so that we close off this thing. So we are continuing to speak to certain check uh, what can we do. We know that our schools have reached maximum, beyond maximum capacity. But what would be worse, you know, this is a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. We are left with a situation where some of schools will be overcrowded. And or we're going to have a situation where we have some of our learners or we'll have our children at home not being in school. So we have to make a choice there. And we are making a choice that every child must be in a school. We will deal with everything else when a child is wearing a uniform in school. That is a priority that we will be doing. We have taken that choice and we are determined to ensure that we, we deliver on that, on that decision. To ensure that we, we get all our children in school, especially those of school going age. So we are feeling that let's 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 open up. Uh, let's open up. Let's uh, you know let's come up with plans. Let's share ideas. Let's find ways together to ensure that we get these children off the street. You know, especially children of school going age into a classroom. Uh, you know, we, might, we 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 are playing with the future if we don't do that. You know. Uh, so, this, high, this is a very high pressure area in the Kempton Park area with those 501 uh, grade 8 applicants. And so, with this one, we've also requested uh, schools to open up uh, specialist rooms to ensure that we accommodate learners. Uh, and really, we need to applaud uh, our schools that 
uh, as much as they are waiting for mobiles and others, they have agreed to take in our learners to come into school in the interim. Uh, and, and they will also find creative ways to ensure that uh, learning and teaching continues. Uh, you know, we are not living in ordinary times. Uh, we do have a huge infrastructure backlog. Uh, we do have a huge infrastructure backlog. And that's something that we, we, we are working on. But in the inter where we are now, we are required to find innovative ways to ensure that we, we, we have all our children of school going age in schools and getting the necessary education. And we will provide su uh, a support to those schools. Uh, we will provide support, whether it's educators, support will be there. Uh, and, and that's what's going to happen. So let's open up, to, you know, let's find uh, creative ways to ensure that we, we get that we get this 501 uh, grade eights uh, uh, placed together. But to those parents in the area that they've applied and of this 501, again, I'm assuring you that your children will be in class. Uh, your children will be in class. We know that patience is not endless, but allow us, you know, work with us, be patient with us. It's a, it's a very delicate process, uh, but just know that we, we are aggressive in ensuring that we, we really get these ones, uh, these learners in, in classrooms. Uh, the Tswane West District, uh, uh, this is one of the areas as well. We've got 223 grade eights. I know I just I, I received a call from some of the media houses uh, uh, that they, they are confrontation not only in the districts but also in some of the schools uh, altercation between parents uh, and and I don't know how that helps because you know you'll be a parent you'll be harming each other in front of kids I don't know how that is helping. Uh, but uh, I will be going there to that school, to that area to check what's really happening and really uh, to, to calm down the situation. Uh, Joburg West District, we are sitting with uh, 434 as well, grade 8 uh, applicants. So we do have a plan, as you can see here we have a plan to occupy facilities of Robin Wood College, as well as uh, ensure that there are 10 classrooms. Um, they are not in use, so we were cleaning them up and renovating them. So in the meantime, those learners will be, as we place them, they will be in those schools while we are still uh, fixing this uh, in the 10 classrooms. So, Incomplete applications and late applications. What we have left, we we, we had over uh, uh, thirty thousand plus or so incomplete applications. We managed to place majority of them, uh, and and you'd be wondering how we're able to place them and not place this complete application. It's because of the areas. The, that these applications were. Uh, the 1,300 left, they are in high pressure areas where there's no more spaces. So these ones were in areas where there were spaces, so we were able to ensure that we, we, we place all of them. So, while, uh, we, so we were able to place majority of them. And currently the lead application that we opened up on the 20th of December, which in t will be close to the 31st, was sitting at 8,375. Uh, and what parents need to understand about this lead application process is that you, will be, you have forfeited certain rights amongst those to choose a school. Uh, to choose a school of your choice. When you come, you place your child where there's a space. That's, that's, that's how we're going to be dealing with them. 
and mostly these are parents maybe who have missed the deadline but they are within their province and also in migration from other provinces as well. So those parents must understand that we will place your child because we don't want any child to be out of school, but we will not place your child at your school of choice. You know, so you, can't, you will not be choosing. We'll be telling you uh, this is where we have space for your child to come in. This is where we have space for a child to come in. So parents need to be aware of that. Of that. So in terms of interventions, uh, we have uh, procured 419 mobiles, which are currently rolling out throughout the province. Uh, again, business forums remain a problem. Uh, they are disrupting in certain areas when we are rolling out this particular program. Uh, and in most cases, we know they are working with uh, the leadership of the community, in some instances even councillors. And, and to those councillors, we, we will not tolerate those disruptions, especially if you pick up that you are part of that problem. Councillors need to help work with us. They have a mandate of safe delivery, service delivery. They need to work with us. You know, they need to assist us to ensure that we are able to, to roll out this thing seamlessly. Uh, self built classrooms, uh, <clears throat> especially in high pressure areas, uh, and also uh, the issue of uh, land. Uh, as you know, Gauteng is running short of space uh, of land. So we are appealing to our, not only our sister department and also those with private land that they can able to uh, avail. Uh, come forward, but don't come with unreasonable uh, prices. Uh, you know, come forward as a good citizen to say, I have this land and I believe that this, you know, our community needs it. Come, let's, let, let's, let's talk about it. What needs to happen? It's available. I don't come and think uh, it's a quick money, quick money, quick, quick rich situation because of the pressure. You know, this is a human rights matter. You know, more than anything. You know, this is a social, societal, social matter. Uh, so come, when you come forward, come, come forward with an understanding that you are going to contribute to, to the lives of our own community or your own community uh, to avail them so that we can start uh, uh, building more schools. Uh, with regard to appeals, we received 4,801, and uh, we, we are working around the clock to respond uh, to all of them. Uh, what parents need to understand is that every appeal is given, we are applying our minds to it. You know, we are hearing parents. You know, we are not... Uh, we don't have an automatic system where it's, it's as if a computer is body No, we hear your appeal, we hear what you are writing, uh, and we are responding thereof. You know, uh, it's important that they understand that the department, you know, is applying also its heart in this in this issue. We are not uh, we are not courts. You know, courts uh, are supposed. As we enter a courtroom, you can feel it; it's cold. You know. Uh, so when you enter school, it needs to be warm. Uh, this is this is where the department is. So every appeal we receive, we really apply our minds. We really think about it. We really look at all factors in place before we give you a response. So all these appeals, we are working around the clock to clear them. Uh, they will be cleared. Um, so we are working uh, full time. Uh, it is a very busy period in the department, and and as I conclude, I want to thank the uh, the, the officials for working tirelessly, tirelessly. I know that you had very or none holidays ever since uh, because of this issue, uh, working around the clock to ensure that you know we are ready. Uh, uh, the parents, the, the children, we are ready for children. We are ready for for the new academic year. So I want to thank them for the hard work that they've been doing. And also to our schools, uh, leadership management, 
uh, throughout the province, you know, to also prepare for tomorrow. Uh, it's not an easy feat. You know, some schools are starting off an advantage, some are starting from a disadvantage, but all schools are starting tomorrow. Uh, so, so we, we, we appreciate that. Uh, so that let's continue to work together to ensure that we provide the best for our children and to the media again. Thank you for coming. Thank you.